Hello, I'm Jana, and welcome back to the Crafty Corner. Today is part three of the Crypt Project. We're going to be assembling all of the fun pieces that we've been creating over the past couple of videos. If you'd like to see which supplies we're going to be using, go ahead and pause here. All right, let's head over to the Crafty Corner. Welcome to part three of the Crypt Project. In our last video, we built a custom tomb using lots of Timo's ideology and etc. pieces. Now, we're bringing in more etc. to create the foundation of our crypt. We have a combination of some Sizzix cobblestone that we altered with some Distress Mica crayons. And now we have our base. For the base, we are going to be gluing those wonderful cobblestones over the top. And before we get started with the gluing, I need to camouflage the edges. I'm kind of thinking distressed black soot paint will work, but as I'm putting the paint on, I'm noticing that the thick board is just absorbing it like crazy. So we might need to change tactics and use another medium. Yeah, looking at that, I'm definitely thinking we need to switch mediums. So my thought now is that we could use some Distress Crayon Black Soot to cover those edges instead because the paint, it is just absorbing too fast and it's not very opaque with the thick board. But not a problem. This is why we have many different medias at our disposal. So let's go ahead and switch over and start smooshing with some crayon. So with the crayon, we're just going to run this around the edge and then I'm going to take my fingers and smoosh that out. And as you can see, this is pretty quick and pretty effective. Crayon is an opaque medium, so it's going to cover up our rough edges very nicely. And by smooshing directly with our fingers, we're saving a whole bunch of time instead of painting all around the edges. So this works out quite well. Just apply more crayon and then smoosh it down with fingers. And the crayon is still nice and creamy dreamy, so smooshing is very easy. All right, this is our last edge, so let's just quickly apply that crayon and smooth that out. Great. Now, just rubbing that last little bit, and then we can see about attaching those cobblestone pieces onto our base. Now we're going to pull in some collage medium mat, and this is Ranger Distress Collage Medium. And we're just going to take a nice scoop out of the jar, and we're going to start putting that on our surface. Now, if you don't want glue in your fingers, go right ahead, use some gloves, use the paintbrush, use a sponge, whatever works best for you. But I'm in a hurry, so I'm using my fingers to spread this around quickly. And it also allows me to see if there's any high points or spots that are missing glue. I just find it easier to smoosh it around and get a nice even coat. Plus, fingers are washable, and I usually like to wash my hands in between times using glue because having dry glue on your fingers, not so fun. So I like to just carry a cloth and have my sprayer right nearby for quick and easy cleanup. Okay, we've got that on here, very good. And let's bring our cobblestones in. I'm just going to line that up and gently press that down. Mm, the cobblestone looks good. Now we'll take our next piece and line that up on this side and add that as well. This is a quick and easy alteration to take our base from plain and unassuming to something spectacularly creepy. And I love that cobblestone. We're even going to conceal those seams later with some crypt paste for more added grunge. So let's add that third sheet. We'll put that up here. Great. And I think I'm going to do a little bit of trimming because I think I have enough overhang that I can take that and put it in the top right corner. So I'm going to be pulling in the tonic snips to do some quick trimming. So we're just going to quickly work our way around the edge and cut off that overhang. And I should be able to use that to fill in the empty spot on the board. OK, 
Okay, there we go. Just flip this over. And yes, that fits perfectly. That's great. So now I don't have to cut into my remaining panel, which I can now use for another project. Great. So that's all nice and glued. I do have a little bit of overhang in some other areas, so I will need to go back with the scissors and trim those pieces off as well. But the glue's setting up very nicely today. It's not taking too long. So that is good news for us when I want to jump in and do some trimming. Okay, just a little bit more. And I've got to trim the other side too. So we're just going to work right along the side. There we go. It's one piece. And we'll get the other piece in just a second. Good. Just snipping right along. I'm using the thick board kind of as a guide to help me stay in line as I'm trimming. So we have our board all done. Now I want to cover up those seams. They're not overly noticeable, but... I feel like they are kind of noticeable, so I wanted to blend those in. And to do that, we're pulling in Crypt Paste. All right, so we've got our Crypt Paste, and I have a palette knife in hand. This is the nice little skinny one. And we're just going to take a generous dollop of Crypt Paste, and we're going to start smushing that on. I'm not really trying to cover up all the cobblestones. I'm just trying to blend out those little seams, and this is going to kind of help make this look a little bit more rocky. And it'll definitely add some great texture to the entire thing. All right, just spreading that. I can even bring it over on the edges, give us even more texture. Now, the interesting thing, the Crypt Paste actually dries a lot darker than when it's put on. When it's put on, it's like this kind of creamy gray color, but as it dries, it develops this really interesting brownish green look, and then you've got those really cool specks in there that give it this wonderful granite look as well. So this is going to just add more to the entire look of grunge that we are going for. So I'm just going to make my entire way around and then we'll have to set this aside and let it dry. Now, drying time with the Crypt Paste. I'm putting this on fairly thick, so I would be estimating around an hour or so for it to completely dry. It's definitely going to be thick in some places and I do want that because I like the idea of having many layers going on here. And of course, if you're in a dry environment, temperatures are going to be higher and humidity should be lower. So drying times will vary depending on humidity and heat. Though if you are in a hurry, I can recommend setting this near a heater. But I do not recommend drying it with the heat tool. This is not something that you want to do a forced dry on. It's better to let it just naturally dry when possible. Okay, so we've made our way all the way around. This is looking good. I might just need a little bit more here and there, but for the most part, our base is covered. Mm. Just love that texture. I can't wait to see this dry and see all those wonderful speckles in the Crypt Paste. That's got to be one of my favorite parts about it. So just scraping that out, kind of just blending that in a little, a little bit more at the top. It's looking really good. I'm happy. Okay, so that's pretty good. We're gonna set this aside to dry. So our next alteration is going to be revolving around the file card drawers. This is another fantastic substrate from Ideology. The plan is that we're going to be offsetting them kind of like this to make the walls of our crypt. But before I can do that, I need to take the drawers out and I need to knock out the backs. One of these is not going to have a back at all, but the other is going to have a partial back, which I plan on gouging the heck out of and chopping it up to look like a broken wall. So first things first, let's knock the drawers out. Sometimes the drawers are already a bit loose and will pull out, but I came prepared. I have got the Tim Holtz Ideology Texture Hammer. It is still a hammer, it's got some decent heft, and I'm going to use that to bounce the shelves out and pop the backs. So we're just gonna give these a few whacks. And let's see. Okay, 
that wasn't too bad. I was able to get that one out. Not terrible. I can always set this aside and use it for another project. Now I'll give this one a good whack. There we go. Got that. So those are the two drawers from this one. Now, we're going to knock out the back of this one completely. Looking at it, I probably only need one or two wax to get this out. Oh. That's right. This is the one that I'd already kind of tested things out on to make sure I could get that out. Okay, so not too bad. Can just toss that piece aside. Now, this is the main thing that I want. But I do not want the hardware on the top. The hardware is great if I was using this as a file drawer, but I'm not. So I'm just taking a screwdriver and we're going to unscrew those pieces. I will save these to hopefully use at a later date on something else. But don't need them right now. The main thing I'm after is the frame. And that is going to be a great frame. Now the cool thing with the frame is that I'm going to be attaching this awesome crypt-like front. And the crypt is not just going to be single-sided, it's going to be double-sided. Because I want one side, when you look at the exterior, to look like you're looking in at the crypt. And the plan is, I'm going to glue that onto here, then we're going to take the door and offset it like that. So it's like you're looking into the crypt like that at an angle. It's going to look really, really cool. But the first thing that we will need to do is to cover the outside and the inside of each of the boxes. So I'm going to set this one down and we'll be back in just a bit after I've had a chance to demolish the other box because this panel here needs to be cut up. Now I've kind of drawn a little bit of an idea on the backing. I want to create this very jaggedy edge. And to do that, I'm gonna to need to go out to the wood shop and cut this up. I'm thinking just a handsaw will do it. And the more jaggedy edges, the better. So we'll be back as soon as we have that sliced and diced. So we've cut our piece of wood and this is what we have. This is gonna be absolutely fantastic. So the plan for this is we're going to be popping that back in here and we will glue it, but I just wanna take a look at how it's looking. There we go. And we have got this awesome jagged portion. But let's see, I think I want to go in the opposite direction, so let's put it like this. So the plan is that this is going to pretty much be like a hole in the crypt wall. And my plan is to pack lots of skulls in here. That is going to look absolutely awesome. But before I do that, I do want to glue everything back together and put our paper in. So for gluing, I'm going to be using a gel super glue because I want this part to be extra stable. Collage medium is great, but I need extra fast drying and extra stability because this is gonna be part of the main structure. So just spreading that along there, a little bit more this way. Hopefully this won't misbehave. I don't want to end up glued to the project. That's never a good thing. Okay. Right. I think we're just about ready and just a little bit at the bottom. Okay. So I'm going to see how do I want to do this probably like this I'm just gonna carefully put that in and push there we go okay so that is all ready just making sure that everything is going to be even all right 
I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to set this piece aside for the moment and I'm going to quickly clean up the little mess that I made with the super glue. I got a bit on myself too, so I'm going to use some rubbing alcohol to get rid of it. Rubbing alcohol is going to act kind of like a solvent and allows me to peel off that super glue. Because that stuff, like I said, it dries pretty darn fast. There we go. And I've got that yuckiness off the glass mat. Okay. Now well, I've still got a bit on my hands, but that will rub off soon enough. Okay. Now we're going to be switching over to collage medium to glue our paper onto all of our substrates. So with the vignette, I want to completely cover the inside and the outside with the brick paper. This was in this year's Tim Holtz Ideology backdrop papers, and I just love the grudginess of it. It is perfect for what we are doing. I'm just gonna take this, and we're gonna flip that down onto here. The base does not need to be covered, so that's the good news. And I'm gonna take a pen and mark where I need to cut. So, all right. Here, line it up. And mark. I'll just go around the back, do the same thing. If it's a little bit big, not too big a deal, I can trim it down. And I need two of these, so why not? Let's do another one while we're at it. Okay. Good. All right, I'm just going to cut these two first and we'll go from there. So I've got my first two pieces of paper. That's good. And let's grab the collage medium. So these are for the side panels. And we'll just put the glue right onto the surface. Good. And we can go ahead and stick that right on here. Hey, that's seeming like a really good fit. Great. And we'll just flip that right over and we'll take care of this side. Okay, pretty good. Let's take that other piece. And place that down. Oh, this is already starting to look more crypt like already. That grungy stone brick is fantastic. Okay. So, the next thing that I want to do is I want to cover the top. And for that, I'll just flip this over again and trace that too. So while I'm here, I'll do two tops because the other file card drawer has the exact same measurements. Okay. Okay. 
That's one. And here's the second one. For cutting, I'm using the Tiny Tonic Snips by Tim Holtz. Definitely one of my favorite cutting implements. Okay. All right, well, let's take care of the top. Now, I do have a teeny tiny bit of overhang, so while I'm here, I'm just gonna trim that off. There we go, and flip that over. Great. And let's grab some collage medium. There we go. Spread that out. And we'll stick down that next piece of paper. All right. That's good. So I'll just leave that to dry for the moment. Go over to this one. So this is going to be the top here. More collage medium. Smush that on. Okay. I'll take that and place that down. Good. All right. We're going to go ahead and turn this on fast forward as I add on the rest of the paper. So let's get started. Now we have all of our paper on these file drawers and I am very pleased with the way it looks. It's definitely helping along with that crypt look and I just love these backdrops. So I'm just doing a quick little bit of trimming because I had just a tad of overhang in a few areas. There we go. The next thing we're going to do is work on the interior of the box. I was thinking about papering it, but I want something even more textured. And to get more texture, we need to use some pastes. And for paste, I want to use the Ranger Distress Grit Paste Opaque. That is going to add some great texture to the inside. Now, the Grit Paste is even more gritty than the Crypt. The Crypt Paste has the really cool speckles in it that we can see here but if we want even more grit then this is where we want to go and then we can paint it to match our exterior walls so what i'm going to do is take my palette knife and we're going to add lots and lots of grit to the inside of these vignettes so just take that we're going to scoop and we're just going to smush that. Now I kind of want to just stuckle this on. Like I don't want it even, I want it jaggedy because that's just gonna add lots of visual interest. But I want to cover up all of that wood. So I'm just gonna be scraping and adding on the layers of texture. Now I do expect this to take a fair amount of time to dry. Texture paste, especially in more humid Quebec, simply do take more time. And since I am being very liberal with the amount of texture paste I'm I expect it to take longer than average. My best guess is going to be that I will need at least an hour for this to completely dry. I'm not being remotely even. It's very chunky in places, and that is just what I'm going for, so. That's okay, if it takes time to dry, it takes time to dry. But I need to do all four 
sides. There we go. And I'm just going to keep working my way all the way around. Good. Glad I stocked up on the grit paste because I'm expecting this might take almost half a jar. Good. Let's turn this. Great. So just smooshing that around the best that we can. And then after this has had a chance to dry, I'm going to be painting it with a combination of pumice stone, hickory smoke, and probably a dash of lost shadow just to add some contrast. Okay, I would say that's pretty well textured. That looks good. I'm just going to set that down and we're going to grab the other one. I'm going to add lots and lots of texture paste and I'm going to work on the interior sections. Okay, Ooh, that is a lot of paste. That's going to be okay. So I'm just turning the box at different angles so I can smoosh all that paste around. There we go. And I'm using one of the Ranger Tim Holtz palette knives. This is the little one with the finer pointed tip, which is perfect because I'm trying to get into some of these back corners. Okay. That is smoothing out. Good. Now I get to chunk it up. This is definitely one of the fun parts of this project. I like playing with pastes. It leads for lots of adventure. Okay. I'm just going to keep turning. Good. Just adding a bit more here and there. Ooh. So much texture. Okay, good. Scraping off the extra bit. And we're on to the last side. And just scraping that right on. Good. Now I'll have to come back and do the outside pieces here. I'm definitely going to be covering that up in black soot crayon. Just try to keep everything kind of uniform. Okay. Ooh. That is good. There. We are good. Very happy with all that. Oh, I'm gonna smush a little of that around my finger. I'm gonna cover up as much of the wood as I can and just even a few parts up. Ah, that was sticking to me. Great. All right, I'd say that's pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and let those parts dry and then we will come back and do some painting. One more thing before I set this drawing. I wanted to wipe down that edge and this isn't going to interfere with the drawing time but I can attach the front of the mausoleum because so I've got this really cool piece. This is one of the thick board Tim Holtz ideology Halloween pieces and that's going right on the front. So why not? We're here. We can add that while we wait for things to dry. So what I'm going to do is run a very thick line of hot glue all the way around the box because I want that piece to be stuck good. Okay, almost back to the beginning and a little bit more. There we go. So I've got that. I'm just going to take this 
I'm going to set that right on here. Just want to make sure that everything is even. That is good. Then we push down, set that up right, and just make sure that everything is in place. Because once this is set, I don't want to have to move it again. All right. I am pretty happy with it. Great. So we now have the front of our crypt. Ooh, this is looking more and more crypt-like by the moment. Very cool. So now I think we're good. So we'll be back within an hour or so. Now that our grit paste has dried, it's time to start adding in some color. Now I'm going to be painting all of this. We're going to be using some grays and I have got some lost shadow, pumice stone and hickory smoke. So we're going to put some of that off to the side. Just going to give this a good shake and we'll put some down on the mat and we'll start painting. Looks like I'm a little bit low on hickory smoke, but if I add some water, I should be able to have plenty to use. At least to get my base coats down. All right, I'm just gonna give that a quick shake because I wanna use all of that up. And then I need some of the pumice stone over here too. There we go. So I've got all sorts of gray to play with. Now I just need a paintbrush. There we go, I've got a nice big one. Let's start with the hickory smoke. So we're just going to take this and paint that in. I think for the most part, I just want to get down a foundation of hickory smoke and then I want to go back and add some accent colors to get some low light spots in here with the other colors. But the paint is a nice way to get down some color nice and fast and color should match up beautifully with the other things that we're working on. Okay. And as you can see, all of that fantastic texture is starting to become even more noticeable since we're adding the color and it's going to pop even more once I start adding some different shades of black. So for now, we're going to go ahead and put everything on fast forward as we do the rest of our painting and then we'll come back and take a look at what we've done. And then we'll probably even go in with some black soot distress crayon for a little bit more added grudge. All right, let's go ahead and kick things on fast forward. finished painting the interior of our crypt and that is looking good we've got all sorts of different grays in here and that's adding some depth but I want more depth and more grunge so we're going to be adding a layer of distress crayon black soot so I'm just scribbling some down on the mat here and we're going to be taking the Tim Holtz blender brush and we're going to use that to apply more black soot on the interior now I'm just going to give this a good spray with a distress sprayer and we're just going to scoop that right up and see what we can do. Now, I'm leaving the bristles out as far as they can go because I want this just to brush over the high points. And that is working beautifully. Just like that. All right, I'm going to turn that. Brush. Perfect. It's doing exactly what I want it to do. So. You can see we've now got some more highlights and lowlights, and that's looking just like stone. Let's take a look at this one over here, and we'll do the same thing. I'll try to hold that at a good angle for you guys. And just brush it on. Okay, so already I need some more crayon. Just scribble more of that down. Good. Quick spray. And scoop that right on here. Just lightly brushing getting good effect here. Okay. 
Okay. Mm. That is looking good. And turn. And I'm just kind of scrubbing at this. Mm. Definitely liking how that's coming out. Cool. Now that I've got the Distress Crayon out, I also want to quickly go around the edges to get rid of that exposed wood. So that's pretty easy. We'll just take this, crank that up a little bit, and smush. Now I'll just smudge that out. Over here, same thing. So this is a nice easy way to camouflage those raw wood edges and keep so that grunginess of the crypt. Nice, quick, and easy. Good. So that's one box. Let's go ahead to the second box. Scribble and smush. Great. I'll just keep working our way around. Good. A bit more here. Ooh, that is nice and jaggedy. I love how the grip paste has given us so much good texture. That is awesome. So, we've just got this one last side and we are good. So the next thing that I want to do is to attach this to our platform. So this is the platform that we grunged earlier and we also did the crane around the edges. So we're just gonna set these up just like that. I wanna make sure I've got enough space for everything because we're going to be putting in some pedestals. Okay, I've got space. Good. So now we can hot glue these in. I've got my hot glue gun right here. This is the Sher Bondar High Temperature. And we're just going to add a pretty generous amount of hot glue. If we have glue ooze, all the better because I can camouflage that with more paint and some mosses. So having glue ooze in this case is not going to be a bad thing. And if we have glue strands, we'll just blast that with the heat gun and we'll be good. All right, that looks good. I'm just gonna take that and set that right here. And we're just gonna give that a little push. I'm gonna hold that a second or two and we should be all set. Mm. This is definitely making me super happy. I am loving how this project is coming together. It's dimensional, it's grungy, and we're getting our spooky vibes going for the Halloween season. Okay, box number two. Let's run that around. There we go. Lots and lots of hot glue. Not worrying about glue ooze at all. Be as generous as we can with that. There we go. That's ready to stick. And I'll probably run a small line of glue up and down the side as well, right over here. But I'm just holding things in place while that has a chance to stick. Good. But if I run a strand of glue along here, I'll be able to camouflage that with some moss and some tattered mummy cloth. So I had plans for that eventuality. Good. All right, I'm gonna start back here and run a strand of glue right down this. Okay. There we go. Perfect. That isn't very noticeable, which is good. And I wanna do the same thing on this side. Just take that, start here and run a strand down. Ooh, it's almost invisible. Cool. All right. Ah, glue strands. So I'll just set that aside for a moment. We'll just take a quick look. That is great. Okay. So I'm thinking the next thing that I want to do is I want to get our lights installed. We've got some really cool lights and I kind of need to get them in place first before we do any more construction because the lights are going to need to be camouflaged. So what we have for lights, we have got a tiny light strand. And these are Tim Holtz Ideology lights. And what I want to do is 
glue this down onto its pedestal. I think I will use hot glue in this case. All right, so I'm just gonna take that. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue around here. I don't want a lot and I do not want glue ooze in this case. So just a little bit and we're gonna stick that urn right there. Okay, and I've got my light poking up, so that's good. And, let's see, I want that facing this way. We'll add a bit more glue along here. Again, I don't want too, too much. I just want enough to make it stick. And I'm just gonna shove all these lights through here for the moment. Okay, good. And let's stick that right here. All right, that's perfect. So I'm not gonna worry about this. I am gonna do something to hide it later, but right now I'm more concerned about getting all of our lights into place. So what I want to do next is I want to have a whole bunch of lights going around the doorway. So I think we'll do something like that, but the question is, how do I want to attach it? I'm kind of leaning towards hot glue right now. It's not the best solution, but it's the better one for the substrates that I'm working with. And again, I can totally camouflage that out. So let's turn this over here like that. There we go. I'm gonna... Perfect, now we're in frame. And I'm going to take the glue and I'm going to put down little dots and then we're just kind of going to hold and wait for things to set up. And after I have those in place, then I'll have some spare lights left over enough to kind of backlight the crypt and some to load into the next urn. So I'm just gonna put that down. We're gonna wait a moment or two for the glue to set up and then we'll keep on going. That's pretty hard with fingers. All right, not bad. Ah. Yeah, I'm gonna be blasting glue strands. I can tell that already. And let's put another bit right here. Okay, I'll take that and just smoosh that down. I'm trying to kind of hold this with my finger. Just let that kind of set. There we go. Ah, the glue is everywhere. Oh well, I can get rid of it. It's not that big a deal. If you didn't want to stick your fingers in the glue ooze, I would recommend using maybe the end of a paintbrush or the metal remnant rub tool from ideology oh. both of those would work pretty well for holding hot glue in place right, next i want some glue right here there we go yeah. it's very gluey i'll bring this around push that right in and i'll have to hold for a moment or two Try to smoosh that glue there. That's not bad. Now we're getting the hang of this slowly. And we'll bring this around. Want some more glue here. Okay. And let's smoosh that in. And I'll smoosh the glue out. Ooh, hot. Pretty good. Oh, so much glow. All right, almost all the way around the door. Let's keep going. I want more glue right there. Okay, and I'll try to smoosh that in. Right there. Good. All right, 
think we're doing pretty good. Should only need about two more spots of glue and that will be the end of this part of the, the light strand. Okay. Oh, I think I can get away with one more spot. All right, I want glue right here. Good, and I'm just gonna smush that out. Hot, 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 and good. I think we got that portion done. Oh, my urn's tipping a little bit. Let's see, I wanna reinforce that. Oh, hmm. Let's see, maybe if I had some glue to the base. That should be okay. Good, and all of that's gonna get hidden when I get the moss in. Just gonna set this aside for a moment. I need more glue. Let's reach for a glue stick. Good. Now the next thing that I'll need to do is bring in the door. So I'm gonna go around on this side. Okay. And the door is going to be right here so i'm going to need a big glue line along here so right here more glue i want to double up on that for sure good set that back in the holder and we're just going to tuck that door right in here perfect I'm just gonna kind of hold that in place. That's gonna look so good. Yep, there we go. Now the next thing I want to do is to bring in the crypt tomb. So here's the tomb and it's gonna go right here. And that's kind of, oh wait, can I put that in here yet? Mm, I don't know. So what I want to do is kind of tuck all of these wires in a little bundle back here. Kind of just like that. I'm just gonna be kind of hidden. And then I'll sneak the other wire back. You know, I can probably camouflage that. I think I have to leave it here because I really need to do the skulls next before we bring that around because otherwise I'm not gonna be able to reach this area. So the lights are on hold for the moment. Let's just tuck these out of the way temporarily and turn our attention to this part. Now we're getting into the seriously fun part of decorating the whole crypt. So we've got all sorts of fun pieces to play with. to sort this out first. I'm going to need the boards and the bones. Put our paper doll figures off to the side. We don't need those guys yet. We don't need our candles yet either, but we'll definitely be getting to them. Now I'll put our letters off to the side too. here. Don't need spiders yet. I can move those off to the side. All right. Bones and boards are what we need right now. There we go. So this is the part that I've been looking forward to quite a bit. We're going to be kind of making a spot here for our skulls to get smushed into. So the plan is to stack them up as much as we can and make a wall of skulls. So, just kind of roughly seeing like how this is gonna work. Let's see, let's put this little guy over here. 
Yeah, this is gonna be fantastic. So let's get the hot glue gun and start putting the skulls in. Let's see if we can't zoom in a little bit because this part is gonna be really cool. Perfect. All right, so hot glue and skulls. So I'm kind of gonna just, you know, I'll just do the bottoms because I could fill in the gaps with some crypt paste later. That could be fun. All right, so stick a skull right here. Yeah, I think we're just gonna kind of tack them in with the hot glue and then maybe I'll use the crypt paste as a cement and we could kind of smoosh that into the cracks on the outside. That'd be really cool. All right, kind of like that. So I love this whole idea of a mausoleum or like a crypt. Like I'm thinking like ancient Rome where they have crypts under the city. Like kind of like a necropolis. So that's kind of the look I'm going for. And I'm so happy that I was able to get the jaggedy bit of that wall taken out. This is just looking nice and creepy. All right, and now I want that little guy right here. Take him. Oh, so many glue strands. I'll just stick him right here. That'll work. Great. And then we'll work our way up. So I kind of want to alternate. Now, the nice thing is that I've been collecting skulls for quite a while. So we've got all sorts of different shapes and sizes for skulls that I've been collecting from all of the various Tim Holtz ideology releases. So this is pretty cool. And I love that we've got so many different choices for skulls. Okay, let's take that. I'll stick this guy here. Then I'll grab one of the bigger guys. All right. This is looking better and better. I'm so excited about this wall of skulls. Okay, now what do I want to fit in over here? I've got that and, ooh, I've got room for like a little guy. Right there, okay, I think I got an idea. Get the little guy in and then get the second one. All right, it's gonna go there. Let's quickly get this guy. I can easily slip him in while the glue is still flexible. Now I'm not worrying about the glue mess. I can clean it up later. All right, come on. Get in there. There we go. Oop. And I need more glue. There we go. Ah, come on. Get in there. Come on, stay. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna need some extra stuff. Right, let's see if I can't get a little one over there. Yep, that works. And what do I wanna put over here? Yep, I've got space for that guy. Fantastic. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. Ooh. Okay, we'll squeeze him right there. And I think I've got room for one more little one right there. Let's see if I can't squeeze him in. Okay. There. Excellent. And maybe I'll perch another skull up there. All right, that is a wall of skulls. Fantastic. So now I want to grab the crypt paste and I want to smush that in kind of like brick and mortar. I think that will give us a really interesting look. So let's push the rest of these bones out of the way. I think I want to work from the back into the front. Ah, oh, that's quite the web of glue. Okay, let's 
Try to get rid of some of that. That's definitely in the way. Not ready for cobwebbies yet. And let's take a look from the back. Ooh, the back looks just as cool, but I want crypt paste to fill in the cracks. So let's take that and lots of this. Oh, and we'll zoom out. There we go. So now we're just going to fill that all in with the crypt paste. Oh, this is gonna look great. I love that, just filling it in like it's cement. And if the skulls are kind of partially showing, that's perfect. And I'll just blend that into the rest of this. Just pushing that right into all the holes. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was good. And this will definitely take a while to dry, but that's okay. And just get that smushed right in. And it takes whatever time it needs to to dry. And I can just kind of pull the extra off like that. There. There we go. Good. Cool. I'm just gonna taper that right off. Okay. Oh, still a spot that I'm trying to fill in. Wonderful. That is gonna turn out really, really good. Now, while that is drying, I should be able to put my wood pieces over the top. I don't need a lot of real estate to glue those on. I just want them on in general. So I'm kind of thinking I'd like to just make a little cross. And you know what? I could even use some of the crypt paste to like bury the other end. That would look cool. All right, so a bit of glue. I'm just gonna stick that right here. So I can use that to hold that in place, and then I'll go in with some more crypt paste and bury the bottom of that. But maybe I'll do that after I put more boards on. Hmm. Ooh, got a nice big one. Could go across like that. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Hmm. Let's see. And, oh, maybe I'll have one going up and down like that. And that'll give me something else to build off of. Cool. All right, and let's see here. Let's take this one, maybe put that a, oh, I kinda wanna do like a second one of those like that. That'll give me some more space to build on. Take that, put that here, kind of like at an angle, well, maybe right up and down, that works. Then I can take that, put that, hmm. maybe like this. Okay, oh, glue strands. Oh, cool, this is working out very well. All right, and I want one more going this way. Okay, and let's see. Oh, I can do that. Take that. Run that like that. I just need to hold that for a second or two. Cool. All right, so I'm just holding all these things in place. 
good. And another dash of glue right there. Oh, I'm going to need to go in with the heat tool very soon because the glue is everywhere. Put some glue here and there. I'm just gonna sneak this in right there. Perfect. So now we've got our boarded up crypt. That's awesome. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of hold this all together for a moment or two and let the glue do a little bit of setting up. Then I'll clean it up with a blast from the heat tool. That is good. And we'll be coming back in later with all sorts of moss and stuff. All right. This is fun. Okay, so that side's good. Let's flip this back around and see where we're at. Ooh, and that oozed nicely into here. Great, so now we're just gonna do a quick blast with the heat tool. And we'll be right back. Okay, so the glue strands are gone. Now that we have all of our skulls in, I can add the tomb. Oh, wait a minute, I want to scatter some bones. Not quite. So I've got a few extra skulls that I can put out. Stick one there. Maybe, yeah, there we go do a little skull pile. Oh, perfect. Like that. There. And I do want the bones out. Now for the bones, I think I can get away with collage medium. These don't need tons of adhesive. They just need to lay in places and they can do a slow dry, which is okay. So let's go ahead and start putting some bones out. And again with the bones, I've got this fantastic mixture of old and new. So that's really, really cool that I've got so many different varieties. And these are from different releases in Tim Holtz Halloween ideology. And I just love that we have so many different textures and finishes. It's, it's neat and just gives us more creative options for when we are creating. There we go. Let's take another one. Awesome. And yes, I do want a skull in the corner over here. Just drop him in without worrying too much. Great. And let's sneak one over here by the door. Cool. That is definitely making me happy with all of the pieces. This is what I love about ideology. You work with your alterations and then after everything's done and you've got your substrate finished, then you just get to play and create a scene. And I just love scene building. It's one of my favorite things about Halloween. There's just so many options, which I absolutely love. Okay, let's see here. Two more bones and we'll be good. Put that one, little one right here. And I've got one more big one that I can add in. So just add a bit more collage medium and we'll find a good place for this. Yeah, right around here should be good. Oh. <laughs> just need a little bit more glue. Good, we've got our glue, we'll stick that right here. Now we can add the tomb, and hopefully I didn't put any of the bones in the way. Nope, we should be good. Actually, I do wanna move these because I want them visible. It doesn't make any sense to have them out and not be seen. Okay, perfect. I might move them 
But first, let's just glue the tomb down. And I'm going to be very generous with the amount of glue we're putting on because we want this to stay put. Okay, lots and lots of glue. Good. And that's just gonna go right here. Perfect. So now that we have everything in place, we've got our main focal point here. We can now work on getting the rest of the lights done. And I kind of just had a little thought of what I want to do with these pieces. I'm just kind of thinking right now. If I maybe kind of curved these around like that, that would be really neat. Oh, I'd have to move these, but not a big deal. Just move that guy over here. Ah, get back here. Let's just see how that's going to work. If I put that, oh, that needs less bend. Put this over here. Oh, wow, I don't think I need to bend that part at all, really. All right, let's take that. That's going to go here. And then I could take the last part and bend it around there. That would look cool. Just need to bend this just a little bit. Yeah, like that. All right. I like that a lot. All right, but first I need to do the lights and then we can see about the gate. Or do I like it like that? Mm. So many choices. Kind of like it like that. Like there's like almost like a little walk way to getting to that. That's kind of cool. So if I did that, just put that like this and that would go here. Ooh. Yeah, I like that quite a bit. I think we'll only need the two gate pieces. Yeah, I think that's gonna be the plan. Neat. All right. So let's turn this back. Now I wanted to tuck the lights in down here because I want that to light up. I don't really need a whole lot for the next thing. If we just kind of smoosh that down, I should be able to cover that up with some mummy cloth. I'm going to just take this, turn it, and we're going to work on just sneaking this around so that I can have my last light. So I need the pedestal. And we're going to glue that here. We have our little light coming out around the corner. And let's see, is that going to matter? Not really. Just take our glue. I'm going to stick that right here. Now I need the pedestal and the little urn thing. Take that, stick our light through. Don't need a whole lot in the way of wire, just enough. And we'll glue that down. And then I can tuck the rest of that strand elsewhere. Okay. Got that. I'm just going to hold this here. Got my little flame. Oh, this is going to be good. Okay. So, that's good. Now we're just going to turn back. And I'm just going to make sure that all of my other lights are tucked away. Because we don't need to see those. Okay, so what I am going to do, I wanted candles as well, so I'm going to bring those gate pieces, and then I want to put candles on the edges. So again, I'll need more hot glue. We're going to be very generous as we coat the gate, just like that, good. I'll take this and stick that right here. That should be pretty stable. And we'll do the same thing on this side. I've got the 
gate. Oh, I'm gonna need more glue. All right, and we'll squeeze that. Squeezing really, really slow because I want lots and lots of glue. Not a big deal because I can camouflage it. We'll take that and put that here. Great, ooh, this is really coming together. It's gonna be awesome. So now we can go ahead and add our drippy candles in. I'm just kind of working on how I wanna do that. I'm just gonna place these. Just kind of thinking how I wanna, yeah, I wanna do a little trio. Like that and then I'll have the other three over there. Perfect. So just put plenty of glue here. And add the candles. So that's one, two, and three. That looks good. All right. And we'll do the same thing over here. Lots of glue. And now the candles. We've got one, two, Come on, get in there. And three. Very, very good. Hmm. I'm gonna put this up here. And I'm also just going to black out the back because I don't want that to show over the top. Just a little bit of black soot to camouflage that. Good, and we'll just add a glue strand right here. That's perfect. Okay, now what do I want? I do have an extra skull. Oh, I wanna put that right over here. That'll be a good spot. Oh, and I've also got the paper dolls. I forgot about them almost. Well, I want her at the opening, so I'm gonna save her for the door. And I think I want, hmm. You know, these guys are actually kind of almost too big. Maybe I should put the girl in here. That looks a bit more realistic to size. Okay, so I can put her in here like that, and I can put the tall guy maybe outside. Yeah, I think we'll do that. So, we'll just run some hot glue up and down this. That's gonna be pretty well hidden, so I'm not worried. Okay. All right, so I do have one more sentiment I want to add on. We're just gonna get the hot glue and add that right to the top here. And I didn't like how that was getting to be asymmetrical. I want this to be more symmetrical, so why not add another thick board sentiment? There we go. So we've got from Regions Beyond and Lost in the Darkness. Perfect. Now I want to add another skull. We've got our little demonic girl in here, so she should have a little skull by her feet. Excellent. And now I want to do letters in the front. I altered some of the really cool resin letters that were brought back this year and I of course had to add them to this vignette. So we've got the word beware which seems quite appropriate for a crypt. There we go. There's the A. We need an R and the E. Cool. So I like that little addition. Now I want to add in some of the mummy cloth. And we'll be using the hot glue gun for that too. Let's see here. Kind of had this broken up into pieces. All right. So first, I want one right down the middle. We'll just take this, add that here, and then drop that in and kind of smush that. That will that little seam 
And then I want my other really long one over here. That's gonna cover up the back of that baseboard. Good. Yep, right in there. I think I want another little piece. Just add a dot of glue. There we go. I can add another swath of cloth right in there. Ooh, that's starting to look really good. And I do want another one right in here. So why not? I've got plenty of material. I can add that in. Ooh, you know what? I also want a spider. A spider would look really good there. So just adding a little bit of glue, taking out a spider, and we'll stick him right there. Fun. Might as well use all those fancy spiders that we worked on. Okay, speaking of spiders, I've got more that I'm going to be adding in as we tuck in those other bits of cloth. So I'm kind of thinking I want a little bit here. Actually, no, I really, I don't know. Do I need it there? I'm not sure. I'll think about it. But what I do want is spiders. So I'm going to take some spiders, stick them onto a few places. Oh more glue and if there's any glue ooze we can camouflage it with other things so I've got a spider there and I wanted one by the candles I'll take that and we'll stick this guy over here nice let's see here I've got more I know I want to hide one around front well, why not? I could put one in the back, maybe on one of the skulls. That'd look neat. Take that, we'll stick you right there. Ooh, I like that. Now let's add some glue into that dark corner over there. So we'll just take the hot glue gun, got some glue, and I'll just carefully tuck the cloth right in there. There we go. Perfect. Oh, it's looking really creepy. I like it. All right, so I do want to switch this around towards the front. Because I have another paper doll that needs a spot. And I wanted to do something about this piece right here. Let's take the hot glue gun and we'll add this in. There we go. That works. Great. And I've got two more spiders. One is going to go onto an urn. Thought that'd be fun. Stick him right here. And I've got one more spider. Hmm. Let's add him to the boards. There we go. So we've got all of our spiders and we need our last paper doll. Wow, these guys are really, really tall. Hmm. You know, maybe I'll just have him kind of hanging out here, very shadowy and mysterious in the corner. That would that'll work. Doesn't have to be in scale, just kind of a shady, mysterious guy hanging out. All right, let's take that. We'll just hide you right here. That's just kind of creepy and fun, so why not? Okay, and I've got glue strands everywhere again. Oh, and I wanted to kind of hide this. Let's see here. Can I tuck that behind him? Oh boy. I might have just worked myself into a corner with this, but you know what? We can figure it out. Maybe if I run that up the corner here, we can... Yeah, I can hide that out up top. That'll work. But I'll need some hot glue. Well, I'm here to make that stick. Okay, 
and hopefully I won't fry the lights or anything, but I shouldn't because this is some of the thicker plastic. Okay, I'll just push that. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. Very hot. Okay. That should be fine, and I can cover that up with a big leafy plant of some sort. We've got lots of moss and things, so that should be very doable, and then maybe I can build like a little box to slip that into, just to keep everything kind of hidden. Hmm. Well, I'll figure that out as we go along. All right, now on to the moss. So I've got all sorts of wonderful mosses and lichens that I picked up at Amazon, and these will be fun to use to hide things. Like we can just stick a nice glob of moss here and then a little bit of stuff here, and you won't even know we've got a cord hidden in there. All right, and I'll probably do a good chunk of that with collage medium because I found in the past that the hot glue can actually burn some of the mosses that I'm using, which I do not want. Okay, I'm gonna take this. Ooh, that's a really big piece, I like that. Let's see here. Take this, I'm gonna stick that in there. There we go, cord hidden. Now we're just gonna kind of work our way around and add little bits and pieces here and there. So let's go ahead and put this part on fast forward as we do our finishing touches. Here is the completed Halloween crypt and we have it lit up. Let's take a closer look. So we have our ghost lamps here and I added some flames and those were cut with, with some vellum. And we have our creepy guy over here and our crypt door. We've got all of our mosses in place. If we kind of go around on this side you can see the boarded up back of the crypt. We've got our spider hanging out right there. All right. Let's go ahead and turn this. As we come around, this is the main part of the crypt. So we have our beware out front. We've got our creepy demon girl with her summoning charm. And we have the tomb and the skull wall. I am absolutely in love with the skulls. And those tiny lights are adding just the right amount of glow to make this extra spooky. And check out all of the grunginess in here from the paint and distress crayon that we added. If we scroll back a bit, then we can see the entire thing. And we'll just turn this a little bit more so we can see the side. There we go. So this is the completed crypt. Thank you so much for joining me here today for part three of the Crypt Project. I had so much fun with the creation of the Crypt. Thank you for joining me on this Crypt journey. And until next time, happy crafting.